worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Lord bless this church, Lord bless each and every one here, Lord. Let it prosper and grow, Lord. We just thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. Bless the tithes and all. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Yeah. 
into these doors so that you'll feel like you're unworthy to praise Absolutely. the Lord. But his blood makes us worthy. That's right. It don't matter what the devil tells you or how many Amen. times he brings it back. When you got it under the blood, you know, that's all we need to do. And, you know, when we we just keep on saying, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I thank God that he don't know. You know, he just erases it out of his mind. Is, okay. You know, he don't know it any longer. He said that it's cast as far as the east as the west. Yeah. And he's remembered anymore. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I um, was thinking about the, uh, you know, I heard a preacher recently preaching about when. Um, when Jesus washed his disciples' feet and how um, that was just like a, that was the servant's job back in that, those days. They would have like a, the lowest of the low servants at the door who would like wash the feet of the guests when they came in. And uh, how at the, the Last Supper, how Jesus washed all 12 disciples' feet, even Judas. 
but none of them washed his feet. You know, I thought, wow, you know, but that same person who who washed all their feet the night before, you know, um, died on the cross for them, for all them and for all of us. You know, I've been reading all through the, um, I guess, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, about all the ordinary people that God healed, or Jesus healed, and all the ordinary, you know, people that he would just stop and, and raise their child from the dead or, you know, open their deaf ears or help them their tongue be released so they could talk or blinded eyes after blinded eyes. Just ordinary people. And, um, you know, Dad mentioned recently a, a message that he preached. Who, you know, Mr. Big Stuff, who do you think you are? And sometimes we think we are more than, than we are. You know, there was an old preacher that said, uh, thou thinkest thou art a humdanger, but thou art not a humdanger. <laughs> And uh, I use that sometimes. I've told that story a few times in my work circles, and some people, they just think they're high and mighty, and they're just not. We're not. You know, God is so holy, and we are so worldly. Um, and I'm thankful for his righteousness in me, because otherwise, you know, who am I? I really never sung this song, but it was on my heart. So, because we are somebody in him. Nobody. <laughs>
would stand and feet, perhaps just for Daniel Williams to record.
come into Egypt when Joseph returned to Egypt and found his brothers there. And it was a, I read all this story today. I read the story about his funeral, how dignitaries were there, Joseph's funeral, and how they made a great possession. And I know it was chariots and horses, but I can just imagine it like today. I, I went to a funeral not too long ago where the man worked for the city of Gastonia, and they had a, a half a mile long of city trucks lined up in the funeral possession. It was a pretty thing to watch, you know, showing the respect to him. And I, I saw that. If you read and read the story, you ought to read it about Joseph's funeral and how they just uh, made a big to-do over it. This man of God had passed away. Amen. And uh, let's just read the story, starting in verse 14 of the last chapter of 50 of Genesis and read down to verse 21. Hallelujah. And the words, I think, are on the board. So if you don't have your Bible, read it with me. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father. After he had buried his father, and when Joseph's brethren saw their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us for all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their, and their sin, for they did it unto the evil. And now we pray, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him and made him cry. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the for am I in the place of God. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring it to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. I want to talk to you tonight. God gave me this on the way home from church today, and I couldn't, couldn't hardly get home quick enough to get into this and see what God had to say. But the title came to me on the way home, Quit Worrying About Tomorrow. The evil of the day is sufficient thereof. Tomorrow will take care of itself. If we live another day, if we know the Lord is keeping us today, he'll be keeping us tomorrow. That's right. Everything will be all right. Let us pray. Father, I pray tonight that you'll touch us, Lord, by your spirit, by your power. Lord, I can't preach without you, but we can do all things through you. And uh, every one of us have something that we let our minds and heart go to worry about. These brothers worried that Joseph was going to kill them. But they realized when Joseph talked to them that he did had not stopped loving them. And God, I believe that you have not stopped loving us. No matter what we get into, no matter how sick we are, or how broke we are, or how distraught we are in our mind, God, you still know us, Lord, and you still love us. And I read those words about Joseph where the Bible said he said, I'll nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them. And he spake kindly unto them. There's been many times I come to the Lord and I could have took a thrashing for what I'd done, what I thought, or what I said. But God, you always speak peace to my soul. Amen. When I'm troubled the most, you speak peace to my soul. You whisper sweet peace to me. And I love you and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, help us tonight to go on, to proceed, to face tomorrow's task whatever it is, and if we need you, we'll call on you again in the morning. And I can tell you right now, I need to call on you in advance because I know I'm going to need you in the morning, Lord. I need him in the morning, need him in the evening, need him in the noontime, need him in the evening, need him in the middle of the night. And you're always there, my precious friend, Jesus, who loves us so much. Thank we thank you for it. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Amen. Leave somebody and just be bold with them. Take what word. Amen. Amen. I think y'all tell worry, somebody bro. with some vigor tonight, quit worrying. And uh, you know why to do that. You know how to do it. You know why to do it. Because God said not do it. He said be careful for nothing. Amen. And, and it amazes me how quick we can get in a worry mood or mood. Amen. 
Uh, both of them worked, I guess, a worry mood, uh, because when a worry mood, hey amen. amen. Uh, when I was a young man, I, I, I don't like referring to them that much. Did a little bit of Wednesday night, but, uh, you know, uh, there used to be a country song that said, it takes a worried man to sing a worried song, amen. And I tell you, if you're worried, it'll show. You'll be singing a somebody done somebody wrong song. You'll be singing something that depresses you. But if you know the Lord is keeping you, what you got to worry about? It amazes me. It seems worry seems to be the number one pastime of the church, amen. Seems like we worry easier we can be at peace, Amen. And when Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives peace, but as I give you the peace, amen. And it's a peace that this world don't understand, amen. It's a peace that passes all understanding. Most Christians, and I, I don't say this judgingly, I'm just a Christian, and I, I don't think you probably a whole lot further along than I am, or don't think you're way behind me. I just put us all in the same boat. And I say that most Christians spend way too much time Worrying about what might be or what might have been. Amen. We just do that. Amen. And uh, especially when the world says or when the word of God says, be careful for nothing. Amen. We ain't supposed to worry. That's what that means. Amen. Don't mean not to be careful. It's a translation. That means don't worry about anything. Somebody once said, don't worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Amen. Yeah. That's what you got to do. You got to believe God is going to take it. Uh, through and take us through and take it through us, whatever he needs to do to make a way when there seems to be no way. Uh, we're blessed. Whether we admit it tonight, we're blessed. Whether we got a host of people around us or whether we're struggling through this world at the moment by ourselves, uh, we're still blessed. As I sat over there on the podium, had two of my daughters. I can only hope that my son would join them. I can only hope that my grandchildren would be in that number. Uh, and maybe someday they'll all be here. I, that would be wonderful, amen. But until they do, we keep pressing on. Until everything works out, we just keep on doing what we know to do, amen. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that God has a plan for all of our lives, amen, every one of us. And we either are yielding to the plan or we're not. We're bucking up or we're yielding to the plan of God. That's just that simple. And if we would do that, we'd find God's presence to be so real, in our life. Sorry about that, John. Amen. I should have picked that up. But I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that God has a plan for all our life. Verse 20 could speak volumes to all of us tonight. God meant it for good. Amen. We can just use the last part. We don't have to give the devil any credit. We just say God meant it for good. Everything that happens in your life, the deaths that comes to your family, the sickness that comes to you and your family, uh, the poverty sometimes that we just can't get our head above water, all of that, God meant it for good. And you know that that's not the intentions of the devil, amen, but God meant it for good, amen. Life has a tendency to dash or destroy our dreams and imprison or hold back our hopes, amen, to stop us from pressing on. Those things we got to have. We got to be a dreamer to believe what God what we can be in God and what God can do for us. Amen. And we got to have hope. Amen. Uh, the Bible said, uh, you know, if we didn't have this hope, we'd be all men most miserable. We got to have this hope. God uh, equipped us with something. We have to make it just like a car. Can't run without gasoline. You can't make it without some hope. Uh, if you're not, especially, and most people feel like they're not where they want to be. Thank God we're not where we was. Amen. Right. And praise God we're not where we want to be. Amen. We're on a journey. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for that. But if you realize that, then you're going to have to have hope of a brighter tomorrow, a hope of a better day, and believe that God is going to give that to us. Oh, even though Satan tries to destroy or dash our dream and imprison or hold back our hope, we can face different types of traps, whether they be uh, metal bars or mineral bars. Joseph had a dream. And Satan probably would ask him, now what, Joseph? What you got to look forward to now? After the well, after the slave market, after the auction, after the pot of fur that you had turned on you, after the prison that you was in, and oh yeah, one more thing happened to him after you were forgotten, left out there to die. Amen. Now what you going to face tomorrow? 
But I want to tell you tonight, based on the word of God, nothing. I know some of you have been through a lot. I look out here and see Susie just got out of the hospital and different ones here that are sick and been afflicted. Uh, several in a church, Dee's mama, uh, just got out of the hospital and Colleen was in there not too long ago and just different ones. And I've had my sickness and I've had, I won't say my share, but I've had more than I feel like God want me to have. And they've lingered around way too long. Somebody say amen. amen. But that ain't the order of my day, amen. And I can tell you tonight that based on the word of God, nothing can stop the plan of God, amen. God has a plan and it's going through, amen. I just believe that. For Joseph, I believe that proved out to be true. For you and for me as well, I believe it proves out to be true, amen. And if, and if we didn't uh, know that, we have the word of God. Romans 8, 28 says, uh, just paraphrasing a little line, and it all things work together for good, amen. I'm telling you, I told you young people have a tendency to say it's all good, it's all good, and when they tell me that sometimes, I won't argue with them. I say, well, this ain't good. What I'm dealing with right now is not good. Uh, so all things are not good. But for the saints of God, all things work out for good. Amen. Amen. To them that are called according to his purpose. Yes. Amen. We have other scriptures that we can quote to the devil over and over in this world. Jesus said you shall have tribulation, but be good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. God's word tells us that. You say you're trying to impress me, preacher. No, I'm trying to get you to look up. Uh, David said, I will look into the hills from whence come my help. My help come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. If you're not looking to the right place, I'm telling you, you'll get down. If you listen to the government, if you listen to the news, you will get down. But I'm telling you, God never intended for you to be down. He said in his word, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God the Spirit of God would raise up a standard against him. He also said uh, that uh, we are not to look at things around us, but look above. We're to look to him when we see all the things that are foretold in the Word of God that we see happening every day. He said when you see these things coming to pass, lift up your head, your redemption. That means your deliverance. That means your day of hope, your day of joy that you long for is about to come to pass. You're almost home. Weary pilgrim. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. I believe that's what he's saying to us tonight. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. If we didn't have anything else, we got Psalms 23 that says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We can dwell on that. We can think on that. And if you didn't have another scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Uh, I'm telling you, we seem to be more, more interested in what the uh, media thinks about us or what somebody thinks about us. I'm telling you, we need to hear what God has to say. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. If you're not there yet, God's not through with you. Somebody hear me. Right. If you're not in your tomorrow yet, there's good news and bad news. If you're not in your tomorrow yet, and then you're not where you want to be. But if you're not in your tomorrow yet, God already is. Amen. He's already there. He knows what you're going through. Amen. Uh, if you're not there yet, God's not through with you. Quit worrying about tomorrow. God's already there to calm the storm or calm the child, whichever one he needs to. He'll either take you from the storm or through the storm. Somebody say amen. Right. Praise amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be as the children of Israel was. When God spoke to this, lying prophets had come and told them that you ain't going to have to go through all this. And I think at the time they weren't even halfway through it. But they had been uh, pronounced by God to have 70 years of Babylonian bondage. And they were in the middle of that. And God just encouraged them. He didn't tell them it was over. He didn't tell them that, that, that you know, you ain't going to have to go through this. That's what the lying prophets told them. And they were getting their hopes up that this thing's about over. But they had many more years left of that bondage. And God said, let me tell you something. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. It may be 50 years down the road. I hope it's not. Maybe 30 or 20 or 10 or 5. And I hope it's not. But he gives us a hope and a future is what he says that we can have. Amen. 
Joseph was the eleventh son of Jacob, and to say that he was a spoiled or that he was spoiled is, is probably a big understatement. Amen. Uh, probably just don't even come close to telling you how spoiled Joseph was. He was daddy's pet. Amen. Uh, he had made, uh, you know, uh, everybody gets accused of it. I do with my children that I got a favorite and you try not to have. You try to treat them all alike. Try to love them all the same. Try to take care of them. With my nieces, I have some that say my favorite. And I have others that say that one's my favorite. And you try to be sweet to all of them. You try to be good to all of them. Whether it be your children or your nieces or nephews or whatever it is. But I'm telling you tonight that every once in a while, sometimes it's because of what they do for you. And sometimes it's because they're good to you. Sometimes it's because they're there for you that, that we do sometimes. But Joseph, while he was out worrying about making money, taking care of the family, he was sitting at daddy's feet. Amen. He was there. If, if daddy needed to drink water, he probably went and got it for him. If daddy needed some help getting up to go to the bathroom or whatever he needed, he was probably there to help him. He was there. It made a difference. He become uh, what the brothers thought to be a little sport brat. But even worse, Joseph didn't do anything to help his cause. Joseph made no effort to hide the fact that I'm daddy's favorite. Even proud to wear that coat of many colors that he made for him. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. I'm preaching just a little bit. You'll bear with me and help me. I don't have all that much, so I won't be that long, maybe. But I might be. Just let God have his way tonight. That's what I'm going to try to do. Amen. But he was his father's favorite son, and his brothers hated him for it. They actually hated him. They couldn't stand to see him coming. When they couldn't find nothing to talk about, they'd make up something. When they saw him come, there comes that dreamer. Amen. There comes that dreamer that's always around telling us what tomorrow's going to bring, what tomorrow's going to be like. And he's so far off base, I can't even believe nothing that he says about what they're saying. Said someday we're going to bow down to him. We ain't never bowing down to him. He's just daddy's little brat, and that's all he'll ever be. Somebody hear me. How many times the devil said something about you? That's what you are, and that's all you'll ever be. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. All my righteousness is filthy rag. And I used to sing, and that's all it ever be. But for the blood. Hallelujah. That's right. But for the blood that he amen. shed on Calvary, I come above all of that. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jacob went so far as to make Joseph his own little a stool pigeon along with giving him a special coat in the process, a coat of many colors, and it just built hatred up in his brothers. Even while his brothers were out working in the field, tending to the family's flocks and making a living, Joseph hung out in his father's tent. The only time Joseph was out with his brothers was to let the father know what they were doing. Amen. To tell on them. Amen. Somebody hear me. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we had a word for Joseph when I went to school and grew up in Belmont. We called them tattletales or stitches. They seemed to be the teacher's pet. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember on Leave It to Beaver, watching years ago, when that little girl would always get on Beaver's nerves so bad, she'd tell Miss Lander, did you see what Beaver did? Amen. They're always there to tell. They're always there to tell what what you doing and talk about you. Always somebody trying to talk about me. Amen. Yeah. I, I don't care. Amen. Sometimes we do care a little too much. But deep in my heart, I'm telling you, sticks and stones uh, may break my bones. But words don't do any physical damage to me. And if I don't let them, they don't do no damage to me. Somebody hear me. Amen. Uh, but I believe that uh, Joseph was a dreamer. Not a daydreamer, a night dreamer. God had given Joseph a couple of dreams that totally ticked off his brothers even more than before. And to make matters worse, Joseph's dream had to do with his greatness over their family, that he was better than them. Amen. They already thought he felt like that, and they sure wasn't going to agree with him. Somebody say amen. Right there. Amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That dreams his brothers had that he had that his brothers, even his father and mother, would be bound down to him. Uh, well, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. His brothers had enough. So a day came, a time came, when they saw their chance to get rid of that spoiled little brat once and for all without getting any trouble. We'll just lose him. Amen. We'll just lose him. Amen. 
Amen. That's what they said. We'll just lose him. Hallelujah. They were tending their father's flock some distance from home. And actually they had moved, had moved them from the place where Joseph and his father thought they would be. So Joseph went out looking for them. And the brothers saw Joseph coming in the distance with that coat of many colors sparkling in the sun. They said, there comes the dreamer. Amen. And they conspired to kill him. We're going to kill him. We're going to get rid of him. I'm tired of him. You ever got fed up? I ain't going to ask you if you ever felt like killing anybody, but I am going to ask you if you ever got fed up. You ever got to the place you said, that's enough. I ain't putting up with that no more. I'm through with that. Amen. I, I mean, we're through. I've turned the page on that. Somebody hear me tonight. Come on. I'm tired of that mess. I'm true with it. They got to that place, and they just they conspired to kill him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They had enough of Daddy's little pet. They had enough of this dreamer and his dream. So when Joseph arrived, they stripped off his coat and tossed him down a dry well. Amen. We got rid of him. I can just see him shaking their hands, you know. Got rid of him. With no remorse, no bad feeling. It's been a long time since I read the whole story. read a lot of it, Dave. And if memory serves me right, they sat down and eat. They had food. They enjoyed their dinner. Amen. He's gone. Uh, this is a dinner of celebration. We're celebrating that that little boy ain't here no more. And we ain't got to deal with him no more. Amen. So when Joseph arrived, they stripped off his coat, tossed him in that dry well after dinner. A company of Midianite traders were passing by, so the brothers' minds started calculating, and they said, better to sell him and make a profit than to kill him and get nothing. Amen. So let's just sell him and get what we can get out of him. And I can hear all those, those 11 brothers, one of them probably said, he ain't worth much. We probably won't get much out of him. Uh, he's too small. But they sold him. They got something. I don't know uh, if it was what they expected or not, but they got something. They sold him. Amen. Better to sell and make a profit than to kill and get nothing. Besides, the life of a slave was usually a short one. They knew they wouldn't have to deal with him long. We sell him into slavery, and he won't last five years. He's so spoiled. He never done days of work in his life. I mean, you've heard people talk about people like that. I'm not the only one that thinks in that vein. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, so now they face the problem of telling their dad. What are we going to tell Jacob when we get home? What are we going to tell our dad that happened to his little favorite boy? That he's not coming home tonight or any night. He will never be back. Amen. What an awful thing for them to do. What an awful trick for them to pull on this good man of God, Jacob. Amen. And so they concocted a story that a wild beast attacked Joseph. And dad, I'm sorry, but he's gone. All we found left to him was this little bloody coat of many colors that you made for him. So we know they got him, amen. And so uh, to add validity to their claim, they dipped that coat of many colors in goat's blood. Jacob believed the story and went into mourning. Mourning so bitter and so prolonged that nobody could console him, amen. I mean, you know the feeling. Everybody here ain't lost a child, maybe somehow. But you've lost loved ones, husbands, wife, mamas and daddies and children, brothers and sisters. You know it hurts, amen. And people can walk up, and I've always thought it was a bad thing for people to do when they walk up and say, well, I lost my husband. I know how you feel. You do not know how somebody feels. Because your husband might not have meant to you what that woman's husband meant to her. You, you may, I've been in a like situation. Uh, I lost my house. I lost my car. I've had my children to quit coming around. All the things that we deal with in the strife of life. But you do not know how the other people feel. You may share the hurt because you've been hurt like that before yourself. But I'm telling you, only God knows how you feel. Somebody hear me today. That's right. Only God can get in your body and know how you feel, how bad it hurts you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So bitter was his mourning that Jacob said, that he would go down to the grave morning. I'll just die morning over this boy. With the exception of their father's intense grief, the brother's plan had went off like a hitch. Amen. They had everything just like they wanted. Now, Dad, look at us. I mean, we all he's got now, you know. He ain't got that little brat around no more. And now he'll look at us, other than the fact that I'm sure they love their dad and it hurt. It hurt to see him grieving and so tore up. But they would let him go through that grief where they could get rid of Joseph. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I just see them congratulating themselves on how well everything's worked out. This come out just like we planned. Amen. A bunch of cutthroat brothers. Bible don't say too much good about them. It says Reuben was unstable as water. I mean, if the water flowed this way, he'd go that way. If it flowed that way, he'd go that way. He just went the way of least resistance, like water does. Amen. And the Bible didn't have a whole lot to highlight any of them to talk about the good deeds they did. Amen. Hallelujah. Their brother, brother was gone. Never to be seen or heard of again. They were sure hopeful of that. No more would their daddy play favorites. No more tattletales on them when they're out doing something they ain't supposed to be doing. No more crazy dreams of dominance like Joseph had. All that was gone. End of story. Not quite. Amen. Somebody hear me. Not quite true. Amen. God takes care of Joseph. And if I, and again, from memory, if uh, in my studies, I've studied this story because I love it. Uh, but it's been a while, and I don't have all my notes, but uh, I think it was some 17 years later, and they're worried about their future. Because all of a sudden, they hear that Egypt has got corn. Israel don't have any. They're about to starve. That seven years of famine was ongoing, and uh, they were about to starve, and so they left uh, their dad, and I think maybe Benjamin, one of their brothers, the baby brother, they had left them there. And they were off to see what they could find in Egypt. When they got there, they found the story they heard was right. Amen. They found out they did have corn in Egypt. Amen. And uh, so they went after some of it. Amen. But they got the big surprise in Pharaoh's army. God had favored Joseph. And now he was about to deal with his brethren. As we close with their text, we look back at this and it says, uh, And Joseph dwelled in Egypt, he and his father's house, and Joseph lived, amen, I'm at the wrong place, verse 14, and Joseph returned unto Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father. After he had buried his father, when Joseph's brethren saw the father was dead, they said, and I'm translating what they said, they said, we in trouble now. Amen. Daddy's gone, and uh, all that hatred and vengeance, all that suffering that he did in the in the pit, in the well, in the pit, in slavery, in prison, and how he'd been forgotten about. I mean, it'd be bad to be in prison, but not one time did anybody from his family ever go see him. Amen. Right. And he got a couple of friends, a baker and a butler, and one of them had judgment pronounced on them, and the other one uh, had a good report that he was going to get out. And when he got out, uh, he said, remember me when you get to the kingdom. And the next line, the Bible says, but he forgot him. He forgot him. Amen. And I'm sure he was hurt. And I think two more years passed. And then uh, the king needed somebody to know something about dreams. And the light come on. Who was it? The butler, I believe. The light come on. And he said, there was a man in prison that was an expert on dreams. Amen. And the king said, go get him. Pharaoh said, bring him up here to me. Brought him up there. He was what he needed. You know the story. And so he rose to fame in there. And on the way was uh, ten brothers coming uh, to see if they could get any corn there. But on the process, they buried their dad. And they thought, well, he's been pretty good to us. You go back to verse chapter 38, 37, you'll find out that they had their crying spells. He cried. He hugged them. He kissed them. They cried. They hugged him. They kissed him. They had all that reunion going on. But now Daddy's died. And I can know that those boys were probably saying, he's fixing to get us. But we're in trouble. Amen. And I thought that this passage of Scripture I read in verse 20 was back in chapter 36, 7, or 8. But when I studied there, I realized I'd got the car ahead of the horse. And it wasn't. It wasn't theirs when Dad died. When Dad died, the boys were there. And uh, the Bible said, uh, they just simply said, and when Joseph's brothers saw their dad was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us because of what we've done. That's what it means. Because of what we put him through, peradventure, he will hate us and will certainly require us all the evil which we did unto him. He is going to give us a whooping. Amen. 
He is going to pay us back for all we did to him. And that's the spirit of the world, you know. Uh, you get me, I'll get you back. You kill my cat, I'll kill your dog. That's the way the world set up, you know. Uh, they're here tit for tat. That's the way it is. That ain't what God set it up. God said do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Right. Not as they do you or before they do you, but as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. And that's what the Word of God teaches us. And so they were too scared to even go see him. And they sent a messenger. Amen. Verse 16, if you want to put it back up there, it's already down, that's fine. Amen. But verse uh, 16 said, they sent a messenger. And Joseph saying, thy father did command before he died. You remember what daddy said? Amen. That's what they were telling him. And through a messenger. They didn't have the gall to go see him. Amen. But they sent a messenger and said, you need to remember what daddy said when he was dying. So shall you say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now, the trespasses of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servants, of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. He began to cry. He probably already thought about what his daddy told him. I want you to forgive them. I know somebody that died uh, some time back, and one of their dying requests was because when they were dying, their husband didn't do right in my book. And uh, I didn't think he did her right while she was in that awful shape. But right before she died, she pulled everybody around and said, don't hate him. Don't be mad at him. Amen. That's, that's a Christ-like spirit, you know. When you know somebody's done you wrong. And so Joseph began to weep and weep about this thing. Amen. When they spake it unto him. And his brothers also went. After he got the word, they probably were standing off looking. He began to cry and weep. He said, well, I don't believe it's going to be that bad. Let's go down there. And so uh, it, it probably was a show more than anything else. I mean, the Bible doesn't say it. But the Bible said those wicked boys said when they saw him weeping, uh, they went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we be thy servants. I mean, they were just jumping into what they thought was the dream was all about. We're going to wait on you. Just like you told us we would, we're going to bow down to you. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am I in the place of God. I can't pass judgment on y'all. I'm your brother, and I'm the one you did wrong. I love God, and he loves me, but I can't do y'all like that. I can't give you what you deserve. Isn't that like the love of God? Amen. God gave us what we deserve. Chad, we wouldn't be here today. Amen? Right. But he's merciful. Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray? Not my will, but thine, Lord. The answer I may never know. Why he ever loved me so, Charlie sang earlier tonight. But to an old rugged cross he'd go. For who am I? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm just about to close. Y'all come on back to the music. Joseph said, fear not. For you, I got good news for you. I'm not God. You're going to stand before an almighty God someday. But this ain't him. Amen. I'm your brother. The one you done me wrong. Amen. But I'm your brother, and I'm not God. And so you haven't got anything right this moment to worry about. You're not standing before God. You're standing before Joseph. Amen. In verse 20, but as for you, and he tells them what happened. As for you, ye thought evil against me. But don't despair yet. God meant it for good. Amen. But you meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Hallelujah. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Because he had me where he had me, I stored up all the goods that we could while times was good, knowing that bad times was coming. And we're going to load your wagon, boys. We're not going to kill you. We're not going to shoot you. We're going to load your wagons with good things. Don't that make you feel just like a child of God that uh, God could have said, Kill them, take them away. I was guilty. I didn't have nothing to say. They were coming to take me away. But the man on the cross put me and you in his will. Amen. And said that we could go free. Amen. Amen. And unto this day it's brought this to pass. Many for good to save much people alive. Now therefore fear you not. Fear you not. Take the, take the guard down. I'm not about hurting you. Fear you not. I will nourish you and your little ones, 
You left them back in Egypt, but you can go get them. I won't smile. I'll be good to them. Amen. I'll do it for Jonathan's sake. I'll do it for Daddy's sake. I'll do it for Jacob's sake. Is what he was saying. And he comforted them, and he spake kindly unto them. Did they get what they deserve? Absolutely not. But I can tell you, it's almost like the good things of God. It's almost like the good things of God. I can tell you tonight that we ain't got the good we're going to get out of this journey because we're not home yet. That's right. Amen. Amen. You hear what I said? We're not home yet. That's why we haven't got the good yet. But because we're not home, evil hasn't been dispatched like it's going to be on the world when God gets us out of here. Amen. It's not going to be long if you're watching by live streaming. I hope I've touched. I hope God's touched your heart tonight. Hope I said something. Maybe you just felt like it was over. Maybe you felt like despair was everywhere. There wasn't nothing else you could do but worry and fret about tomorrow. But I can tell you honestly, when I look at things that I know is going to happen tomorrow, sometimes, Charlie, I just say things like, this is not going to end good. This is not going to be good. It's not going to go to good. Amen. You see it coming. I mean, you're, you're not blind. You can tell that uh, people uh, at home all around the world do not know. Some of them know that tomorrow when they go in, the boss man's going to fire. Amen. But you have to go on in, let him do his thing, and then let God put it back together. Somebody hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. They know, there's people alive right now, some maybe by the sound of my voice, that knows tomorrow is not going to be good. You, you, you know, maybe you sowed an unrighteous seed and you're about to get the benefit or the results of that, not the benefit. And, and you know that. You know that it's coming. Maybe you've got to go back to the doctor tomorrow and you just throw in your heart. The report's not going to be good. But I'm going to tell you tonight, if you can believe that what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. If you can square your shoulders up, go on in the bar and get your pink slip, go on home and let God bless you and find you another job. Amen. Somebody here for the night. Amen. You can go on tomorrow and uh, let the let the man come to your house and serve the papers on you and tell you that you got ten days to get out of the house. Well they're gonna set your stuff on the side of the road. And then let God be God and take care of you. Amen. That's what it's going to come down to. When we get to the place we're going to let God be God, quit worrying about tomorrow. The only way you can do that is to believe in God and believe that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But the same one that told us about it said, I am come that you might have life have it more abundant. I hope you're blessed and you feet. Thank you for joining us for the live streaming tonight. Be sure to be tuned in Wednesday night by 5 over 7. We'll be back to worship. And again, thank you for coming. If this word has touched you, click on there and let us know. If you're one of those that's about word yourself sick, quit worrying. Quit worrying. Cast all your cares on Him. First Peter 5 and 7. Why did he tell us to do that? Because he careth for you. Hallelujah. He cares for you. Thank you and good night to the viewers tonight. Thank you for